Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Capture One and we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Capture One 23 software. I'm really excited to take you through some of the new features that we have today because I think they are literal game changers when it comes to editing and culling. And I know today's video is a sponsored video, but I am just using some of my own photos to test out these features and show you how I use them. And you get to see them working in real time to decide whether they're right for you or not. So I've imported all my photos into Capture One and this is a photo shoot that I did while I was in Gdańsk, Poland and I'm really excited to share with you some of these photos today because we had an actual field of yellow flowers to shoot with which is so cool. So one of the new things that we can do with Capture One 23 is culling. So up here I'm going to select cull which brings up this new dialog box and you can access this whether you've already imported the photos and you can also access this while importing photos into Capture One. So you'll see up here that we've got a new tab called group overview so I'm going to select enable groups and this is going to start grouping up similar images together so I can give them a star rating and this is really helpful you can see in this photo shoot we've got a little section of photos here in the fields and then we've got these close-up portraits here with the yellow flowers and there's several sections of photos that look very similar where I've taken maybe 10, 20 photos in the exact same spot. And this software is now gonna group all of that together to make it a lot easier when it comes to culling. So we've also got a similarity slider that we can use. So I'm gonna bring it up nice and high to about like 95%. And you can see our grouping is very small. So in this group here, it's only found one photo that looks like this. In this group here, it's found these two photos that look similar. So instead, I'm gonna bring it down to a little bit lower, about 50%. And now you can see the groups are much bigger. So in this group, we have one of 24 photos that look similar. Here we've got one of 111. So how I like to do this, I've been using this to cull my last few photo shoots, is I like to head into viewer mode here. And you can see that these are the groupings that Capture One has created. So we've only got four groups and this one has 111 photos, which is a little bit too much for me to go through. So what I like to do is I start right at the beginning and I like to change the similarity slider until I'm happy with the amount of photos that we have in our first group. So I think 24 is a manageable amount of photos to cull and choose from. So I've got this group selected and now I'm gonna go through the images in that group, which are these ones here. So I'm gonna click on this first one and just start scrolling down and give a one star rating to the photos that I like. And what I like about this grouping system is that it stops you from having too many similar photos in repetitive images. And I think it'll make your culling and the final set of images that you choose a lot stronger. Okay, in this next group, we have five. So I'll probably select this photo. In this next group, we have 111. So I'm gonna bring the similarity slider up to make that grouping a little bit smaller and more manageable. So here we've got 12 photos to go through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the photo shoot. Okay, and I am done culling. So now I'm gonna head to library and select all my one star photos. I've ended up with 22 final images selected. So I kind of like to just go through and make sure I'm happy with all my final images. I really like how this grouping culling method really helps with getting a nice variety of photos at the end of your selection. And I don't have too many repeats, which is really cool and actually saves me a lot of time. The next new feature we have in Capture One 23 is smart adjustments. And this is going to be, this is what I think is gonna be the game changer when it comes to batch editing photos. So I've got this photo here, it's taken kind of in the shade. So it's got a little bit of a blue cast to it. It. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to really exaggerate the white balance. So I'm gonna make it super duper warm, like way too warm. <laughs> and here under smart adjustments, I've got white balance and exposure tick. The exposure I'm gonna leave as is because I like how exposed her face is in this shot. And I'm gonna select set as reference. And basically what I'm telling smart adjustments to do is that I want every photo that I apply this adjustment to, to be really warm like this. <laughs> so I'm gonna select this picture up here which was also taken in the shade but you can see it's a little bit darker so I'm gonna hit apply and you can see it's warmed up the image really nicely and it's also increased the exposure a little bit to match the exposure of my other photo and you can see that it doesn't just copy the Kelvin and tint because it does have different numbers here so here we're at 8,000 and on this photo I set it to 10,000 and then I do have another example I want to show you down here with the yellow flowers we have these images are really warm because we've got those yellow flowers that are reflecting warmth on Olivia's skin. So I'm going to hit apply again. 
and here it's chosen to do a Kelvin of 7000. So I think that's really nice because it's warmed up the image enough, but it's still retained a nice color to her skin tones as well. So I'm back on this image and I'm going to actually edit this image properly, so I don't want it to be that warm. So I'm gonna bring down the white balance a little and the tint as well because something you can do is you can use smart adjustments and save them in a style. So you can use them on separate images. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this image. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I'm going to do that. I'm gonna go for a quite a colorful but natural edit to this photo. I really want those yellow flowers and that green field that we're in to pop. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a new field adjustment layer because we're gonna be using the layers here. So I'm going to set this new white balance, this more refined white balance as our reference with smart adjustments. Then I'm going to go down to our curves and give this image a very slight little S curve here. I want to bring down the highlights because it is a little bit blown out in her forehead area. I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit and decrease the contrast too because I want this image to look quite soft. For our colors, I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm just going to bring down on the shadows here. So we add some green to the shadows and I'm going to pull up here on the highlights to add a little bit of blue back into her skin tone so she doesn't look like an alien in our photos. And then I'm going to head to the green channel and just pull down here on the shadows again to add a nice warmth to our photos. I'm also going to decrease the saturation slightly and then let's head down to our color editor. So here under yellow, I'm going to bring the hue of yellow a little more into the oranges. So I want the field to look a bit more dried out than it is. And I'm also going to increase the saturation too. And the same thing with the greens, I'm going to pull down the hue to make them appear a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to increase the saturation and bring up the lightness too, to make it look brighter in the photo. So this is what we have so far. This is the original and these are my edits. Next, I'm going to head into color balance to make some adjustments. And I like using color balance to add a style to my photos. So I'm going to head up here to our layers and just create a new field adjustment layer, which we'll be only using for our color balancing. So I'm going to start off in the highlights and I want to add like a cyan color to the highlights here just because I feel like the image overall is very, very warm and I like to use color balance to add some contrasting tones just to make the edit look a little bit more interesting. I also, I love this slider here. It's so much easier than just trying to pull this out in a straight line. So I'm gonna have a very faint amount of cyan in the highlights here. I'm also going to darken them as well. Next, we'll head into shadows where I want to have like a very warm color. So I think here this kind of golden color looks really nice and I want that to be super faint so I'm going to pull that way down. And finally we have mid-tones which again I want a nice golden color to suit her skin tone here. I've just gone back to the red channel in our curves and just brought down the reds a touch because the image was looking a little bit too warm for my liking. I do like that slight green wash over the photo so I'm happy with what the edits look like now. This is the before and this is the after. So something really cool that we can do with both smart adjustments and layers is that we can include them in styles. So I'm gonna head to style and select these three dots here and select save custom style. So here I'm gonna make sure smart adjustments is selected and both my adjustment layers as well. And then I'm gonna make sure all the adjustments that I've made are selected except for exposure and white balance. Okay, then I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna name this layers and smart adjustments. Let's go with this image because it's a little bit darker. So I'm gonna select layers and smart adjustments that we just created. And then let's go to our adjustments and have a look at our camera settings. So you can see as we're flicking through both these images here, they look quite matched in color and tone. And if we take a look at our settings, you can see that our white balance is different and so is our exposure. And you can see that the layers that we created with our last image and saved in styles has now been applied to this image. And something really cool that you can do with these layers is adjust your opacity. So if you remember, we created our color balance with our second layer, which I've added some nice cyans to the highlights, but I feel like it's a little too strong for this image. So I'm gonna bring down the opacity 
just to remove a little bit of that cyan look and make it more balanced like our other photo. So I've gone ahead and applied the style to the rest of the photos in this photo shoot and you can see without having to adjust the white balance or exposure at all, we've got this photo from the end of the day looking so similar to the photo from the beginning of the day, which I think makes editing super fast and easy. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, but I think this is going to save so much time for, again, photo shoots with such a wide variety of photos. So that is all I have for today's video, taking a look at these new culling and editing features of Capture One that I'm really excited for. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you are interested in getting Capture One, please make sure to use the link in my description. I have a 20% off discount code for you, which I'll also have in the description. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye. From this photo shoot to look very warm like this. Ollie! Ollie, come on! Yay.